John Beverly, the candy man, the businessman with a conscience, on LICMC.net radio every Saturday at 3 p.m. Hello, everyone. This is John Beverly, the businessman with a conscious. Over here at the Alcumaline Village, where each one reach one, each one teach one, one break, one build, and one block at a time. And as we often say, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And we show that we care by the things that we do. Seeing is believing. Today, I would like to talk a little bit about responsibilities and obligations and keeping your word. I was just thinking, and I'm always doing that. Sometimes like they call me a you know, smoke chimney because I think so much. They say, you think too much. But I often tell people, think about what you do, when you're going to do it, before you do it, and make preparations. Because if you prep and make preparations, things most of the time comes out the way it's supposed to come out. For an example, if you're cooking a cake, you don't just throw a cake plate or a pan in the oven and let it get hot and then start throwing a little flour or eggs and what have you. More or less have to follow the directions and go through the process of preparating for what you're doing. Such as if it means a couple of eggs, put your flour in a couple of eggs, this, that, whatever. You know, you have to do those and follow those instructions. And the reason I'm more or less talking about this, I've experienced and seen, as well as had some times and experience myself by making the wrong decisions and not realizing that perhaps if I don't make preparations, a trip for it a little bit better. The outcome may have been a little bit better. A lot of times we find ourselves either we got a job or don't have a job, and either we're trying to get an apartment or a house or a car or something of that sort. We don't more or less focus too much about how we're going to take care of it or how we're going to maintain it or kind of the responsibilities or the obligations that come with it. We just focus on one thing, and that's getting it, what we want right now. That attitude is, I want it now, right now. And once you get it, how are you going to keep it? So if you get a car, house, or whatever, more or less, you really need a job. And you got to make sure that you either have the first month and uh, the security first month, last month, how they do it now, I don't know. But I'm more or less speaking about responsibilities and obligations. Being responsible, a responsible person often gets much further than the non-responsive person does. And I say that because sometimes I talk to my son and we talk about things and what have you. And I would tell him, a story that my father told me one day. He said that on the job, there was two guys. And one guy was a college graduate, and he knew how to do everything. He knew all about everything. He knew the ins and the outs. About the whole business, he could run the business with his eyes closed. But unfortunately, the sad part about that out for five day week, he might work two to three days. And then you had another guy that he didn't know it all, but he was interested and very curious and ambitious. And he wanted to learn. And whatever he learned, it, it stuck with him. And he would come to work every day, five, ten minutes early sometimes, in some cases even thirty minutes earlier. <laughs> So he didn't want to be late. And sometimes, in some cases, if need be, he would work a little bit of overtime 
Sometimes he didn't even get paid for it, but he wanted to make sure that the job got done. And it come to pass that <clears throat> the uh, owner began to have problems, <clears throat> excuse me, and had to downsize. And the guy with the college education, he wasn't worried about anything because he figured, he said, well, I'm so smart, I know how to do this, and I know how to do that, and I can run this job with my eyes closed, so I mean, I'm not even worried about it. So when it boiled right down, and the guy that uh, had the education, the uh, college education and diploma and what have you, graduated, they laid him off. And he couldn't understand that for nothing. So he just had to ask, you know, just out of curiosity, why would you lay me off? And I got all this education and I know how to do everything. And this guy here, you know, just barely got out of school. And, you know, he just, in a sense, I guess you could say mediocre. And just, you know, just do what you tell him to do. He said, well, the fortunate part and the difference between he and you is that you so smart. He said, in a sense, you're too smart for your own good because you figure because you have all this education that people need you. He said, I need a job done, and I need it done when I want it done and when it needs to be done, not when you get around to it. He said, you got all the education, not that you can't do the job. He said, but you're not here half of the time, and I need someone that I can count on, that I can depend upon, that I know that's going to, if I give them this responsibility, that they're going to take care of it, that they can take care of it. And this young man, even though he just barely got out of high school, he's very ambitious. He's concerned about what he's doing. He don't just focus on getting the job done, but he makes sure that the job is getting done and that he do it to the best of his ability. He do it the best that he know how. And if there's something that he don't know, he don't have a problem with coming and asking and trying to find out. He says, so the moral of this story is that I need somebody that I can count on and to be here and that appreciate the job, not someone that figured that the job should appreciate them or I should appreciate you being here with all this education. But if I can't count on you, what good is all that education and you're not here to do what I need you to do? He said, so that's why you got laid off. And this young man here that don't have all the education, but is willing to work and willing to learn. He said, I can teach him what I need done. He said, you know everything, so I can't teach you, but you're not here half of the time. So that's what I mean by responsibilities and obligations and being dependable and being a person that you can count on. You know, I see people and I've talked to different people that some homeless and some, you know, just made the wrong decisions. And those people in particular will tell you that if I wouldn't have made the mistake of taking life for granted, you have to live every day like it's your last day, but live it responsible and not take things for granted, not take that people need you. I don't have a problem with letting people know that I need them and I appreciate them. And I make sure that my obligations are met. Any job that I ever had, I did it to the best of my ability. When I was doing janitorial work, when I mopped the floor, I mopped it. And if I saw streaks in it, I went back over there and get the streaks out of there because I wanted it to look nice, neat, and clean. If I buffed the floor and I waxed it and if it had little streaks in it, I would go back over because I wanted it to look nice, clean, and shiny like it was still wet once it got dry. I wanted to give it my best and everybody knew that what I did and when I did it, they knew that I gave it, I did the best of my ability to do what needed to be done and how it needed to be done. 
and that not only they could appreciate it, but I appreciate that because I give people what I expect out of people myself. Just like I often say, I treat people the way I want to be treated. And doing so, you have to make sure, make sure that you let people know that you appreciate them because often I say people don't have to do anything for you, but appreciate them when they do. I have friends that do things to me from time to time. When they do, I make sure that they know that I appreciate what they've done. I even got one friend of mine that I've been calling on here lately. And uh, he's a man of God. And every now and then when I called on him, and he has, uh, when he finished the job, he always does a good job. And I asked him, I said, how much do I owe you? And it just goes to show that what those around come around, you don't just do things and expect and things to come back. But when they come back, you can appreciate it. And, and you know how people feel when you, you appreciate what they do and you appreciate, they appreciate what you do. And every now and then this brother would do something for me and I offered to pay him. And he asked me, he said, can you just say thank you? I said, huh? So can you just say thank you? And I said, but thank you. And that makes me feel good because it lets you know that it's not always about the dollar. Sometimes it's about the relationship, the friendship. So remember, like I always say, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And when you do things and show that you care, I mean, what other way can you show that you care about the things that you do? Like I say, being responsible, you know, uh, in some cases, I've also witnessed, you know, people, these families, mothers and fathers and what have you, they get uh, they low income, so they get food stamps. But what they're doing is get their stamps and they'll spend up everything on junk and this fast food and what have you. And then once it's over with, but by the middle of the month, then they don't have anything. So that's making the wrong decision. You got to learn how to make the right decisions, when to make a decision, when not to make a decision, you know, when to hold and when to fold. Because a lot of times, as I say, good to me, but not good for me. So we have to focus on doing what's good for us, not always just because it's good to me. And trust me, I've been on that road. I've got a lot of bumps and knocks on my head because I went down that road. I was doing what was good to me instead of what was good for me. So once I learned how to do better, making better decisions, began to do what was good for me rather than what was good to me, my life changed. I began to treat my family better, my wife better, my children better. Not that I was a bad husband. I always believed in taking care of home. But there's always you can do better. So I encourage people to you see the need, meet the need if you can. Don't hurt yourself, but if you can do what we say, lend a hand. If you can lend a hand, do so. If you can't, don't hurt yourself because don't nobody know better than you, than you. Remember, based upon decisions that you make, brings about consequences. Thank you for listening. This is John Beverly, the businessman with the conscious. From the Alcuma Line Village, where each one reach one, each one teach one, one break, one building, one block at a time. And remember, people don't care how much you know until they know what you care. Thank you, and have a great day. Alcuma Line Village presents Youth Field Trip Events. Fridays 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. ages 5 to 17. $10 per person. Minimum 10, max 15. Saturdays and Sundays 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. $200. Minimum 10, max 15. Includes a Kubalon special, hot dogs, chips, and punch. Akulon Village's activities and amenities, air hockey, pool table,
table games, video games, foosball, karaoke, movies, TV, cafe. Located at 7701 Harbor Avenue in Detroit, Michigan, 48213. For more information or to schedule, call 313-921-1616. 313-921-1616. Credit cards, checks, cash apps, and Zill accepted. It's our pleasure to serve you culinary pleasure. Have your next social event here at Akubalon Village. Recreation. Entrepreneur Cafe, Culinary Pleasure, Recreation, Education, Culture. For more information, call 313 Hello everyone, this is John Beverly, the businessman with a conscience. I want you, you to tune in to LICMC.net radio every Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. Also, watch Comcast Xfinity every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. Also, with my friends at the Alcuinon Village. My newest news is I have a channel on stream.com slash London TV net. 24-7 live streamed TV networks. The name of my station is John B. TV. And remember, this is John Beverly, the businessman with a conscience. Well, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And thank you guys for listening. John Beverly, the candy man, the businessman with a conscience, on LICMC.net radio every Saturday at 3 p.m.